Welcome back friends. Welcome back to another video session from this channel. So in this video session, we are going to study about the termination phase of translation in case of eukaryotes, right? So in the previous video sessions, we have studied about the initiation phase and the elongation phase of the translation in case of eukaryotes. And in this video session, we are going to study about the termination phase of translation, which is organized in case of eukaryotes, right? So here, let me present it here. Termination phase of translation in case of eukaryotes. So here, what exactly happens during the termination phase of translation in case of eukaryotes? So as we have already discussed about the prokaryotic translation mechanism. So during the termination phase of the translation in case of prokaryotes, I have already mentioned you one thing, right? The synthesis of the polypeptide chain which was took place so accurately during the elongation phase. So a specific polypeptide chain synthesis, it gets inhibited during the termination phase, right? So let me present it here. So let us we assume it has the eukaryotic mRNA, right? Eukaryotic mRNA. So this is the small subunit of the ribosome, small subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome which is containing or which possess the three specialized sites, A site, P site and E site. And here, this is the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome, right? Large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome. And this is nothing but the polypeptide chain which was synthesized during the elongation phase. Polypeptide chain are the protein which was synthesized during the elongation phase. So here, after the successful synthesis, after the successful synthesis of the polypeptide chain during the elongation phase, now here during the termination phase of the translation, what exactly happens is, once when the specific ribosomal subunit, when it is about to reach the stop codons or the termination codons, here the synthesis of the polypeptide chain, it takes place, right? During the elongation phase of the translation, as we have already discussed, synthesis of the polypeptide chain, it takes place so accurately. And once when the ribosomal subunit, when it is about to reach the stop codons or the termination codons, inhibition of the polypeptide chain, it takes place. So here, as I have already told you, what is the reason behind? So the answer to this question is very simple because ribosomal subunit, it is capable to recognize or it is capable to study only the sense codons which are present in case of the mRNA and it is unable to recognize the stop codons or it is unable to study the stop codons or the termination codons which are present in case of the mRNA. So in order, in order to recognize, in order to recognize the stop codons or the termination codons which are present in case of the mRNA, the termination phase of the translation in case of eukaryotes, it takes the advantage of a specialized factor and it is nothing but what? Release factor, right? So as we have already studied during the prokaryotic translation termination phase, so for organizing, for organizing the termination phase of the translation even in case of eukaryotes, the specific mechanism or the specific process it takes the advantage of a specialized factor and it is nothing but what? Release factor. So what is the specific release factor which is used here? The specific release factor which is used here, it includes ERF1, right? So ERF1, ERF1, it is the specialized factor which is responsible for recognizing the stop codons or the termination codons which are present in case of the eukaryotic mRNA. So here, I need to mention you one thing. In case of the prokaryotic termination phase, in case of the prokaryotic translation termination phase, in order to recognize, in order to recognize the stop codons or the termination codons, the specific mechanism or the specific process, it had taken the advantage of a specialized two different factors like release factor 1 and release factor 2. But here in case of the eukaryotic translation termination phase, by taking the advantage of an only one specialized factor and it is nothing but ERF1. So all the three stop codons are the termination codons. They are recognized by the specific ERF1, right? For recognizing all the three stop codons are the termination codons which are encoded in case of the eukaryotic mRNA. The specific mechanism or the process, it takes the advantage of only one specialized factor and it is nothing but what? ERF1. What it is? ERF1. It is the specialized release factor which is capable to recognize all the three stop codons are the termination codons like UAG, UGA and UAA. So these are the stop codons. Stop codons are termination codons. 
termination codons right so these are otherwise known as umber opal and orchid so as we have already discussed during the prokaryotic translation mechanism or the translation process right so in order to recognize the three stop codons so here the erf1 it comes into the picture and the specific erf1 the specific erf1 it mimics the structure of the amino acid trna so let me present it here so let us we assume it as the erf1 right erf1 so ERF1 it mimics the structure of the amino acid tRNA and it gets successfully recruited to the A site of the ribosome. So let us we assume here. So here the ERF1 it was successfully recruited to the A site of the ribosome. So once when the specific ERF1 when it was got successfully recruited to the A site of the ribosome then there is no further chance for the recruitment of the amino acid tRNA to the A site of the ribosome. Recruitment of the amino acid tRNA to the A site of the ribosome it takes place so successfully or so accurately only during the elongation phase. But once when the specific translation mechanism or the translation process when it was successfully progressed from the elongation phase to the termination phase under such condition ERF1 it comes into the picture and it gets successfully recruited to the A site. Recruitment of ERF1 to the A site of the ribosome it won't allow any further amino acid tRNA recruitment at the A site right because the specific ERF1 it mimics the structure of the amino acid tRNA and the ribosomal subunit or the translation machinery it is unable to recognize or it is unable to distinguish what is amino acid tRNA and what is ERF1 here. So the reason why once when the specific ERF1 when it was got successfully recruited to the A site of the ribosome then there is no further chance for the recruitment of the amino acid tRNA to the A site of the ribosome here. So in the very next step in the very next step one more other factor it comes into the picture and it is nothing but what ERF3 ERF3. So here the specific ERF3 it is in GTP coupled protein right. GTP coupled protein that means by taking the advantage of GTP the specific ERF3 it remains in active conformation. GTP coupled protein factor that means once when the specific ERF3 when it is in association with GTP it remains in active conformation and once when the specific ERF3 when it remains in association with the GDP, it remains in inactive conformation, right? ERF3 in association with the GDP, it is in active conformation and ERF3 in association with the GDP, it remains in inactive conformation. So here, the specific ERF3, the specific ERF3, it gets associated with ERF1, right? So let us we assume here. So here, the ERF3 it comes into the picture here. ERF3. So here the ERF3 by taking the advantage of GDP it gets successfully associated with ERF1 right. So let me present it here. So here ERF3 ERF3 it was got successfully recruited here. So once when the specific ERF3 once when the specific ERF3 when it was not successfully recruited or once when it was successfully associated with ERF1 now here what exactly happens here if we consider if we consider the specific release factors in case of the release factor either in case of the prokaryotic translation or in case of the eukaryotic translation basically the specific ERF basically the specific release factors they are composed of a specific moiety and the specific moiety is nothing but what GGQ moiety what it is GGQ moiety basically release factors they are made up of specialized moieties like GGQ moiety right GGQ moiety so once when the specific ERF3 once when the specific ERF3 when it was got successfully associated with ERF1 now here what exactly happens in the very next step in the very next step the specific ERF3 which is in association with the GTP it undergoes hydrolysis right so let me present it here it undergoes GTP hydrolysis the specific ERF3 it undergoes GTP hydrolysis right GTP hydrolysis so once when the specific year of 3 when it undergoes GTP hydrolysis now here what exactly happens here in the very next step in the very next step 
once when the specific ER of 3 when it had undergone GTP hydrolysis. Now here, so let us be assume it as the small subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome, right? So A site, P site and E site, right? And it is the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome, right? So here, this is nothing but the polypeptide chain. Now, once when the specific ERF3, once when the specific ERF3, when it had undergone GTP hydrolysis, so by that time, what exactly happens here? The specific ERF1, the specific ERF1, which is composed of GGQ moiety, it interacts, it interacts with the specific peptidyl tRNA or the specific peptidyl transferase activity site. Once when the specific ERF3, which is in association with GTP, when it interacts with ERF1, once when the specific ERF3, which is in association with GTP, when it gets associated with ERF1, now the specific ERF3, it undergoes GTP hydrolysis. So once when the specific ERF3, when it undergoes GTP hydrolysis, now the specific ERF1, initially which was got recruited to the A site, now it gets successfully translocated from the A site to the P site. So once when the specific ERF1, when it was got successfully translocated from the A site to the P site, now the ERF1, it will interact with the peptidyl transferase activity or it will inhibit the peptidyl transferase activity, right? So let me present it here. So let us assume it has the ERF3, right? Which is in association with GDP. Now here, the specific ERF1, the specific ERF1 which possesses the GGQ moiety, it interacts with the peptidyl transferase activity which relies or which is present at the P side of the eukaryotic ribosome, right? So once when the specific ERF1 which possesses the GGQ moiety, when it interacts with the peptidyl transferase activity, then there is no further chance then there is no further chance for organizing the polypeptide chain synthesis. So, organization of the polypeptide chain, it takes place so accurately. When there is an availability of the peptidyl tRNA at the P side and there is an availability of aminosyl tRNA at the A side. So, once when there is an availability of two different tRNAs, then there is only chance for the formation of the polypeptide chain. But once when the specific ERF1, once when the specific ERF1, initially which was recruited to the A site of the ribosome, when it gets successfully translocated, once when it gets successfully translocated from the A site to the P site, now the specific ERF1 which possesses the GGQ moiety, it will inhibit the peptidyl transferase activity. So once when the peptidyl transferase activity, when it was got successfully inhibited, then in the very next step, then in the very next step, one more other factor it comes into the picture, right? One more other factor it comes into the picture. So what is the specific factor here? The specific factor it is nothing but ATP binding, ATP binding cassette element, ATP binding cassette element, ATP binding cassette element. So, or it is simply abbreviated as ABCE, right? So, here the specific ATP binding cassette element, it remains in active conformation only when it is in association with ATP. So, let us we assume it has the ATP binding cassette element, right? ATP binding cassette element. So here the element it remains in active conformation only when it is in association with ATP. So here the ATP it is in association with the specific element right. So once when the specific ATP when it was recruited here now the specific element it remains in active conformation and here and here the specific element the specific element it gets successfully recruited exactly at the junction where the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome it is in association with the small subunit right the specific atp binding cassette element by taking the advantage of two molecules of atp it is capable to recruit exactly at the junction where the large subunit of the ribosome it is in association with the small subunit of the ribosome right so for the association or for the successful recruitment of the atp binding 
कैसेट एलिमेंट द स्पेसिफिक एलिमेंट इट टेक्स द एडवांटेज ऑफ एन स्पेसिफिक रीजन एंड द स्पेसिफिक रीजन इट इज नथिंग बट व्हाट हिंज रीजन व्हाट इट इज हिंज रीजन सो लेट अस वे एज्यूम लाइक दिस राइट सो दिस इज नथिंग बट द हिंज रीजन राइट once when the specific atp binding cassette element by taking the advantage of atp when it was got successfully recruited at the specialized junction now here the two subunits of the eukaryotic ribosome they undergo splitting right because for the splitting up of the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome from the small subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome there is a requirement of energy and here the specific energy it is provided by the means of atp so once when the specific element when it was got successfully recruited here in the very next step in the very next step the two subunits of the ribosome the two subunits of the ribosome they undergo successful dissociation right so let me present it here so let us we assume it as the eukaryotic mrna and this is the small subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome which contains the three specialized sites a site p site and e site right and here the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome it was got successfully dissociated in the presence of the specific element right so after the successful dissociation after the successful dissociation of the large subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome from the small subunit so in the very next step in the very next step one more other factor it comes into the picture and what is the specific factor here it is nothing but eukaryotic initiation factor 2d so what is the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 2d here the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 2d it is responsible for providing the destabilization that means in the presence of eukaryotic initiation factor 2d as i have already told you as i have already told you the codon of the mrna right the codon of the mrna it interacts with the anti codon of the tna right so here once when there is a complementarity in between the codon of the mrna and anti codon of the tna only by that time only by that time synthesis of the polypeptide chain it takes place so quickly but here in the presence of eukaryotic initiation factor 2d what the specialized factor what it will do here in the presence of eukaryotic initiation factor 2d the strong interaction in between the codon of the mrna and as well as the anti codon of the tna it gets successfully distracted right so here once when the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 2d once when the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 2d when it was got successfully recruited at the p site of the ribosome by that time the strong interaction in between the codon of the mrna and anti codon of the tna it gets successfully dissociated right so once when the specific tna once when the specific tna and as well as mrna right tna and as well as mrna mrna eukaryotic mrna when it was got successfully dissociated from the ribosomal machinery now in the very next step now in the very next step what exactly happens here a specific factor known as eukaryotic initiation factor 3 comes into the picture right so let me present it here in the very next step in the very next step a specialized factor known as eukaryotic initiation factor 3 comes into the picture so let us we assume it has the small subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome and here the eukaryotic initiation factor 3 it comes into the picture and it is responsible and it is responsible for the subsequent recruitment of the some or other factors and it is nothing but what eukaryotic initiation factor 3 and as well as eukaryotic initiation factor sorry not eukaryotic initiation factor 3 here it is eukaryotic initiation factor 1 and eukaryotic initiation factor 1a so here the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 3 it is responsible for the recruitment of eukaryotic initiation factor 1 at the e site right so this is nothing but eukaryotic initiation factor 1 and here eukaryotic initiation factor 1a it gets successfully recruited at the a site of the ribosome 
So here, as we all know, as we all know, the specific eukaryotic initiation factor one, it is responsible, it is responsible for preventing the association of the large subunit of the ribosome from the small subunit. And in the same way, eukaryotic initiation factor one a, it is responsible for inhibiting the recruitment of the amino acid DNA at the A side of the ribosome. So here, the A side of the ribosome, it will allow the amino acid DNA to get recruited here only during the elongation phase, but not during the termination phase and even at the initiation phase, right? So once when the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 1, when it was got successfully recruited at the E side and the specific eukaryotic initiation factor 1A, when it was got successfully recruited at the A side in the presence of eukaryotic initiation factor 3. So with this, the termination phase of the translation mechanism, it was got successfully completed, right? So all these are the various strategies which takes place during the termination phase of the translation in case of eukaryotes. So I hope that this video will help you a lot. So if you like this video, just hit the like button and share it to your friends. And I remember you people to subscribe my channel for getting more and more videos what I make day to day. Thank you.